focused and fearless. Here's everything you need to know this rush hour of August, or rather October 3, Thursday. I'm Riza Diaz. We begin Thursday's rush with President Duterte's second trip to Russia. Duterte met with Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev, uh, Bedev, exchanged pleasantries, talked on trade deals, and even shared some laughs on the side. Medvedev made a light-hearted comment at the expense of the U.S., which both Philippines and Russia had some issues with at some point. During your visits, there also will be a range of documents signed which are important for our bilateral relations. I am very glad to welcome you in Moscow, in the House of Russian Government. It is sometimes called the White House, but it is not the White House which is in another country. It is the House of the Russian Government, although it is sometimes called the White House, but it is bigger and better. Now, after meeting with the Prime Minister Duterte, we'll be seeing Russian President Vladimir Putin for bilateral talks. Those specific topics to be discussed have yet to be disclosed. Duterte will also be meeting with Russian business leaders and the Filipino community in Moscow. We now have consultative mechanisms where we explore ways to expand our cooperation in various areas, including trade and investments, defense and security energy, science, and technology, among others. Now, before heading to Moscow, Duterte was seen on Tuesday night interacting with embattled police chief Oscar Albayalde. He says he'll wait for more substantive um, evidence before considering firing his top cop. Maricel Halili has the story. President Rodrigo Duterte shook hands and had a brief chat with PNP Chief General Oscar Albayalde before leaving for Russia on Tuesday evening. This happened just a few hours after Albayalde was grilled at the Senate hearing over the case of 13 so-called ninja cops in Pampanga. The president has earlier received the information packet revealed by former CIDG Chief Benjamin Magalong in an executive session in the Senate. But Duterte said he will wait for the Senate investigation to conclude before deciding on the fate of the Pampanga cops and Albayalde. If you have to insist that it is only linked that na yung mga tao na yun uh, was, uh, were under his command. Up to that point, if it comes to a serious thing as dismissing a top official here and there, it has to be for a good reason and there must be enough proof. Albayalde, on the other hand, says he had no ill motives when he called the then Region 3 police chief Aaron Aquino in 2016. He said he just wanted to know the status of his people, unlike what Magalong apparently insinuates. Albayalde was the Pampanga chief of police back then. He's uh, putting uh, words in the mouth of somebody else. No, I think uh, this is very ungentlemanly. No. Uh, of him and very unstatemanship uh, of uh, somebody who is occupying a position in the government. Albayalde even recalled the time when Magalong himself asked for his help. There was even once upon a time in his life na nanghingi pa ng tulong yan sa akin uh, nung uh, way back na siya ay uh, floating from 2006 to 2010. No? Uh, at one time, at one time uh, doon, eh, nakapag, nakapaghingi pa siya ng tulong sa akin. But uh, of course, eh, uh, siguro, uh, selective memory yan. Even Interior Secretary Eduardo Año has doubts if Albayalde could have influenced the case at that time. I, I think Albayalde is, is not in the position of the time. No, no. He didn't set to the time. No, no, no. Upper class is uh, Aquino. You cannot pressure somebody who is... Uh, Magalong says that he has no personal grudge against Albayalde. This is not a clash of classes. This is not a clash of generals. I have nothing against him. Ito, totoong laban ito. Hindi yung may tinatago ko rito at may installed ako sa closet. Amid all these, the PNP chief gave his assurance that the campaign against illegal drugs will not be affected by this, quote, childish argument. Albayalde will retire as the chief of police on November 8. For News 5, Marisol Harili, we are One News.
And here are the biggest stories from the dailies. Alleged Manila drug queen Aguia Gomez Castro may soon be back in the country after authorities confirmed that her U.S. visa has been canceled. Filipino Star Ngayon reports that the Bureau of Immigration is now working with its U.S. counterpart in having Castro deported to face investigations into the so-called drug recycling modus involving some police officers. 22 suspects in the ambush of former Pangasinan Governor Amado Espino Jr. now face murder and frustrated murder charges. The 12 identified suspects were charged with two counts of murder and four counts of frustrated murder, while 10 other, jo were, while 10 other John Doe's were tagged as masterminds, <coughs> financiers, conspirators, and accessories to the crime. But the police told the Pangmasa that they do not consider this case close since they have to yet name the mastermind. They're now eyeing politics, business rivalry, or a personal grudge as the motive for the ambush. And a gorgeous advocacy for the planet, you say, well, this year's Miss Earth candidates got that covered. All 90 delegates of this year's Miss Earth pageant were presented or in Manila on Wednesday with their respective national flowers. The move is meant to promote tree planting as well as bring awareness on the devastating forest fires that ravaged uh, the Amazon this year. Still on the pageant scene, the first batch of send-offs for the 2019 Binibining Pilipinas Queens has commenced. Leren May Bautista will be in Montenegro for Miss Globe pageant on October 21st. Samantha Law, on the other hand, will be in Venezuela for the Miss Grand International on October 25. Leren said she's already busy preparing for the pageant. Meanwhile, Law took a swipe at her critics who call her overconfident, saying it's better to be overconfident than not confident at all. Let's move on now to today's weather. The low pressure area that has been hovering over Pacific Ocean is now off the coast of Aurora. To tell us more about this, we have on the line Chris Perez from the Pag-asa Weather Forecasting Center. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Lisa. So far, the low pressure area is not expected to intensify into a tropical cyclone. However, we will continue to monitor this weather disturbance and provide updates to the general public through our public weather forecast to be issued at 4 p.m. today. Meanwhile, for the weather forecast, uh, Metro Manila and the whole country will experience generally fair weather conditions apart from some isolated rain showers due to localized thunderstorms. There is no gale warning in effect to any seaboard of the country. However, fisher folks and other small sea crops are advised to be alert against moderate to rough seas over the northern seaboards of northern Luzon. And that's the latest from the Pagasa Weather Forecasting Center. I'm Chris Perez reporting for One News. Thank you very much, Chris Perez, again reporting from the Pagasa Weather, uh, Weather Forecasting Center. Investigators are now looking into the possibility of arson as the cause of the massive fire that engulfed the entire Star City complex. The theme park's management says it will try its best to open its remaining ride to the public in time for Christmas. Jen Kalimon with a report. This is what's left of the amusement park, aside from faulty electric wiring. Investigators are looking into a possible case of arson. An initial report says the fire began at the stock room. But according to the Bureau of Fire Protection, so-called simultaneous burning is a possibility. May possibility na arson niya. Kasi doon sa kung uh, simultaneous burning ang tinatawag, na pwede siyang nagsimula ng iba-ibang lugar. Nasabay-sabay. So, yun, yun kasi yun eh. Pag ang sunog, sabay-sabay pero iba-ibang lugar. So, sinadya yun. Almost 80 to 90 percent of Star City was destroyed, including its indoor rights. The offices of the Manila Broadcasting Company near Star City also caught fire. The Star City official estimates damage to property at 1 billion pesos. They hope to fully rehabilitate Star City by October next year. But for this Christmas season, management said it will try its best to make the remaining rights available by December. I cannot assure you, but as far as we are concerned, pipilitin namin na maging masaya ang Pasko ng mga bata. It will depend on this assessment. Eh. Star City said it will provide financial assistance to the almost 500 affected employees. Kasi ang alam lang namin, walang trabaho kami ngayon. Kasi tado po kami lahat, ito kami maasa sa kumpanya ng Star City. Star Park. Eh. Kaya nangangamba po kami. 
yung magtuloy-tuloy yung hanap buhay namin. Kasi para sa pamilya rin po namin yun. The MBC management meanwhile temporarily transferred to their satellite offices so that their AM and FM radio stations can still air their programs. Reporting for News 5, Jen Kalimon, we are One News. Chief Justice Lucas Bersamin is set to retire in just about two weeks. That's why the Judicial and Bar Council fired off its interviews for the four Chief Justice hopefuls. Dale De Vera with the details. Of the four applicants for Chief Justice, Associate Justice Josdado Peralta is the most senior. He was the first to face the Judicial and Bar Council's public interview of Chief Magistrate applicants, an Arroyo appointee. Peralta was asked about the cases where he was either the ponente or he voted in favor of the petition. This includes the burial of former President Ferdinand Marcos at the Libingan ng mga bayani, keeping Senator Laila de Lima in prison, and the ouster of Maria Lourdes Sereno from the very same position he is applying for. When he was still in the Sandigan Bayan, Peralta convicted former President Joseph Estrada in his plunder case. The JBC panel also asked Peralta about his supposed arrogance to tell you frankly, you know, sobrang bait ko nga eh. Ang dami kong pinapautangan, hindi ko na nakakalimutan ko na. Peralta became emotional when asked why he deserves to be the next Chief Justice. I think I deserve to be Chief Justice because I worked all these years. I worked very hard all these years. I'm not a top notch yet. I'm not an honor student. But I, I think I was able to compensate with the work that I've done. Justice Jose Reyes, a Duterte appointee, defended his religious beliefs, including his views on premarital sex. Uh, for me, Your Honor, as a, as a Catholic, it's, it's immoral for two people to engage in premarital sex. But as far as the family code is concerned, Your Honor, the family code uh, protects marriage. Justice Andres Reyes, another Duterte appointee, was asked if News 5 anchor Rafi Tulfo violates due process when his show airs the complaints of people asking for his help. Now, are you familiar with this Rafi Tulfo action program? I know your honor. Uh, he's, I he, don't he, watch. It is said that uh, the Rafi Tool for Action program violates due process because uh, complainants go to him and over the air present their problems. For your honor, uh, they are not they are not the court, so they don't yes, have to yes. observe due process. Uh, uh, that is their way of justice uh, on TV, mm. so I don't think they are aware of the nuances of due process. Uh, it might uh, cause uh, a party who is innocent to be uh, crucified on television and uh, he might be already be pronounced guilty by the public when he has not aired his side of the story. The lone lady applicant and Aquino appointee, Justice Estela Perlas Bernabe, meanwhile defended her decisions in previous cases at the Supreme Court, including declaring the Priority Development Fund as illegal. Perlas Bernabe aired an appeal to her co-applicants. So whoever is appointed, I would like to request that um, he hears his constituents, the problems uh, that they have, and uh, remember that uh, the collective effort is a key to success. And above all, I think uh, he should always remember that um, he owes loyalty to the Constitution and the people. Chief Justice Bersamin is set to retire on October 18th. The next Chief Justice will be the third Duterte appointee in the President's three years in office. For News 5, Dale Devera, we are One News. Let's fast break now to Sports Rush. CJ Perez fired off Colombian Jeep's third quarter explosion to hand Northport's second straight loss on Wednesday. 
The 25-year-old rookie raked 14 of his 26 points in the same period and tallied 11 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, and a block. Admittedly, it wasn't an easy win for Colombian, with Batang Pierre's Robert Bolek waging a personal war against Perez. But the Jeep were able to flip the script at the second half, where they slowly erased an 11-point hole to finish at 114 to 108. Kailangan na ma-earn yung respect ng mga mga teams dito sa PBA. Uh, at least ngayon, uh, napag-aandaan na nila kami. Pero ayun nga, uh, it's all about sa amin, sa amin, sa team talaga. Hindi sa, hindi namin iniisip kung anong gagawin ng ibang team. Basta nag-focus na kami sa, sa team namin. Meanwhile, TNT survived a gusty Phoenix to stay on top of the 2019 PBA Governors Cup with NLEX. But they started slow with Troy Rosario, Roger Pogoy, and KG McDaniels catching fire only in the final frame to sink eight of their 18 triples. Rosario poured out 13 of his 32 points in the last quarter, giving TNT a comfortable 10-point advantage with less than three minutes remaining in the game. But the Fuel Masters made a fight out of it and shaved their deficit to just five points, ending the match at 123-118. to 118. Sabi nga nung mga coaches namin first half, uh, kami na we have to limit them sa second half kasi medyo malaki yung first half score nila. So, uh, talagang trinabaho namin yung depensa namin sa second half. Tapos, uh, uh, we made shots. We made shots sa second half na talagang tumulong sa amin para makuha yung panalog to. And that's how the day is shaping up to be. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. I'm Riza Diaz. We are One News.